So this month, I want to discuss four aspects to having a successful fresh start. One of these weeks, uh, today we're going to deal with planning. Next week we'll do, deal with procrastination. Then we'll deal with provision. Then we'll deal with progression. There he is, back on there. All right, so four things as, as, as it pertains to having a fresh start. Planning, procrastination, provision, and progression. Okay? So planning. They say <clears throat> a, a failure to plan is a plan to fail. A failure to plan is a plan to fail. There's a passage in Luke 14, 28 through 32, where Jesus was speaking about the cost of discipleship. But I think there are some important principles in regards to planning that we can take out of what he says. So does somebody put that on the screen for me. Luke 14, 28 through 32. Luke 14, 28 through 32. He says, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost? whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to war, make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks, for conditions of peace. So I think there's four principles we can pull out of here that I want to address. Mm -hmm. Intent. Somebody put these on the screen. Intent, foundation, finishing, and ripple effect. And I'm explaining that last one. <clears throat> and we're talking about the planning phase. When you have a fresh start, you got to have planning. You got to have a, have a good and proper plan because mm -hmm. a lot of people jump out and do stuff or try to do stuff. But without proper planning, it's not going to work out. So let's talk about intent, foundation, finishing, and ripple effect. Now, intent. I-N-T-E-N-T. -E All right? So intent is that first part. So purpose is defined as the original intent for something. Purpose is defined as the original intent for something. And actually, even when you talk about intent, the definition is kind of similar. The definition for intent is plan or purpose. It is with fixed attention. Determined. That's another synonym. Amen. So listen, whatever you or I are planning to do, that now that you have this fresh start, now that you've got all this understanding of how to complete some stuff, and now you're going to move to your fresh start, you better know why you're doing it. You better know why you are doing it. Because someone told you to, that's not a good reason. Good morning. Because someone told you to, that's not a good reason. Because you uh, saw someone else do it, that's not a good reason. <laughs> because you needed money, that's not a good reason. Because God told you to, that's a good reason. But let me qualify that. Once God tells you what to do and why he wants it done, that does not mean go do it. All right, I'm going to explain this. Once he tells you what to do and why to do it, that does not mean go do it. At least not immediately. It means ask him how. Somebody put how on the screen. Ask him how he wants it done and then actually wait for an answer. Then actually wait for an answer. So many have, have launched out with good ideas. Good ideas. I'm not saying they were even bad, but they lacked proper planning and they ended up failing. And I'm going to talk about this as we get to week four. I heard a sermon series uh, years ago from Pastor John Hill. He's, it was entitled, Preparation is the Process. Preparation is the process. But here's the thing. How many people honestly love the planning phase? How many people honestly love the preparation phase? <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't always. Uh, I'm the type, I get impatient with people. I get impatient even with God. I'm like, look, I know what to do. Just let me go do it. Just, just make the way. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Right? And a lot of us are like that, especially your type A personalities. You just want to go. You just want to get it done. You just want to get after it. But thankfully, 
For me, people or God himself reels me back in so I don't launch out unprepared. So I don't launch out unprepared. Invariably, you know, a week or a month or some time will go past and then I'll realize why I needed to wait. Hmm. I'll realize that I wasn't quite prepared. Have you ever been there? Have you ever jumped out into something that you knew you really wanted to do, even that God told you to do, but you did it too quick? All right. So it's good. It's necessary to have the right intent. But that's only step one. That is only step one. So let's move to step two. Foundation. This is good, right? Foundation. Once you know why you have this fresh start and what you are supposed to do in this new season, make sure that you are given the how that you spend time making it solid. So make sure even once you have a vision. I mean, I know people who are planning churches who are, um, you know, they know what church is. They've been to church all their life. They know what to do, but they still spend months planning, meeting, organizing, praying, connecting, learning so that the foundation is sure and certain. The foundation phase is where the vision is cemented. The foundation phase is where the vision is cemented. I was listening to a talk from Sue Campbell this week, and he said that the key to rep, he said that repetition is the key to learning and retaining. Repetition is the key to learning and retaining. So it's not good enough just to think about the vision one time or speak it one time. Repetition is the key to learning and retaining. So if in this new season you will be leading some others, make sure that they know and that you know and that everybody on board can regurgitate the vision at a moment's notice. That thing has to pop off the lips like 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 bubble gum. The person that lives or leads without clear vision is destined to fail or fall short. The person that lives or leads without clear vision is destined to fail or fall short. So it's good to have this fresh anointing, this fresh vision, this fresh idea, this fresh desire, but make sure you don't skip the planning phase. Jesus says in verses 28 and 29, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation, and is not able to finish. So you have to determine ahead of time if you have what you need in order to complete the assignment. I heard uh, Bishop Tudor Bismarck one time say this, <clears throat> and I'm paraphrasing. He said, God will give you the vision. He'll give you the purpose. And after that, you just have to do the math. You just have to do the math. You just have to figure out, okay, this is what to do. He's told me what to do. He's told me why to do it. He's even told me how. So let's calculate this thing. For example, um, some of you, you want to write a book. How many pages do you need to write per day? What days based on the current schedule that you have at your work are you more able to write? Um, what is the purpose of the book? What is the price point that you want to set for the book? Do you pay a ghostwriter or do you write it yourself? How are you going to publish it? Are you going to self-publish it? How much will marketing cost be? These are questions you got to think through. These are things you got to think through in the planning phase so that you don't get halfway through and say, oh, I didn't consider that. No, start with a proper and secure plan. All right. So you want to start a business, for example. What is the market saturation of your business model in the community? Um, who are your chief competitors? Who would be the primary customers? What platforms do you need to master on social media in order to maximize the effectiveness of your vision? Who can you talk to for advice? Who's been here before? You want to advance in your career or your area of influence. How many books do you need to, to, to read in the next six months? I'm running through some books right now, y'all. How many professionals do you know in this line of work? Who can you shadow? Who do you want to, who do you want to disciple you? What is the salary projection of this profession? What classes can you take? How much are they? Amen. Think, think these things through thoroughly, along with many other questions. That is not an exhaustive list. 
but then start doing something. Think, then do. <laughs> All right? Don't put the cart before the horse. All right, step three, finishing. And I'm going to deal with this more in week four, but I'm going to give you some brief stuff here. Listen, we are the sum of our choices. In life, you are the sum of your choices. This means that the choices that you and I make prior to and during the process will determine how we finish or if we finish. All right? It will determine how you finish or if you finish. A lot of people have started some stuff and it's still sitting there. Right? I'm going to deal with that next week. In this instance, I'm not talking about finishing life, although how you complete your purpose is the best determinant of how you finish your life well or if you finish your life well. I'm just talking about finishing your assignment in this new season of your fresh start. Amen. So Paul says, and so put this on the screen, 2 Corinthians 8, 10 and 11. 2 Corinthians 8, 10 and 11. He says this, And in this I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago. He says this, But now you also must complete the doing of it. Now you also must complete the doing of it. That as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion out of what you have. See, sometimes as we get into the process, we can get tired, get a little worn down. But as Paul says, if there was an eagerness at the beginning, there was a reason for that. There was a reason for that. Don't forget that. Listen, this, this was so profound when the Holy Spirit dropped this to me. Don't forget why when how gets difficult. <laughs> Let me say that again. Don't forget your why when the how starts getting difficult. That blessed me if it didn't bless nobody else. One more time. Don't forget your why when the how starts getting difficult. The world is waiting on what's inside of you to come out. The world's waiting on what's inside of you to come out. Don't forget your why when the how starts getting difficult. And it will, trust me. <laughs> I'm telling you from experience. So then there's a ripple effect. That's step four. There's a ripple effect. When you and I don't complete what we've been assigned to complete. When you and I don't complete what we've been assigned to complete. Jesus says in verses 29 and 30, Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him. Hmm. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Wow. Don't let that be your testimony. Don't let that be the testimony others give about you. See, the fact that you will get made fun of, that's not really the issue. The issue is that people will associate your failure or my failure, especially if it's due to giving up or not planning properly, they will associate it with God's failure or that he didn't co-sign or ordain the assignment. That's the real issue. And they, that may not even be true. But guess what? Perception is reality. Perception is reality. What is it that we say? What is it that you say when you see somebody? They're so gung-ho. And then halfway through, they're like, they, they, they quit that thing. Right? We've talked behind some people's backs. Let's be honest. Oh, they didn't know what they was doing. Oh, you know, God wasn't in that. All that type of stuff, right? We really should be helping them to get back on track. But, or share this message with them. But the thing is, we don't want that to be our testimony, right? See, in verse 32, he says, Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. This is about the king going to war. Now, what's the point here? In other words, because you didn't plan properly, you now have to beg to be let off the hook. <laughs> You, you got to say, please let me out of this loan agreement. You know, I tried. I just I just didn't think it through. Please let me out this loan agreement. And the bank's going to say, nope, we want our money. You might have to say to your employees now that you started this business, you hired some employees. Now you got to say to your employees, please forgive me, but I can't afford to pay y'all. Mm. I didn't plan. I didn't think it through. To your followers, please forgive me, but I, I can't handle this assignment because I'm unprepared. 
These are, these are these things are avoidable. So I'm telling you this to kind of it's kind of like a scared straight thing. Because you can avoid these things if you simply play them properly. And if you've already started, and if you've already jumped out, just take a step back. It's okay. And just retweak your planning. Retweak your vision. Tweak your plan. Tweak the questions you ask yourself. Tweak the advice you seek. A fresh start and a new or confirmed assignment are great things. Those are great things. But they're only the first step in completing the task. They're only the first step, the intent, the foundation, the finishing, and then avoiding the ripple effect. So let's make sure we plan, prepare, and build with a, with a secure foundation that is able to support and sustain the vision we have been given. Amen? As always, go to RelentlessPursuitOfPurpose.com. If you're not getting the blog, you can go to Blueprint for Bible Basics. Dot com to get the book. Amen. I love y'all. Peace. Have a great day. Have a great week. Make sure we are intent and focused on planning and building a solid and secure foundation that will be able to sustain us throughout the duration of completing our assignment.